Well, it's a pleasant spring evening here in southern Michigan, so I thought I'd come outside in the sunshine in the good light to take a look at this crag stock. And when I showed it in the videos before, I talked about this nasty varnish-like stuff that's been brushed all over it. And I said that uh, lacquer thinner would take it off the steel parts. Lacquer thinner seemed a little bit too aggressive to go after the wood. I don't want to ruin the finish beneath whatever this gunk is. So I started playing with other things like alcohol and Prepsol and, you know, degreasers of that nature. And it's coming right off, no problem at all. This is the unclean side, the way it looked as it came uh, right to me. And you can see that kind of pasty, nasty brush mark looks to it. This side here is the side that I've been working on with the degreaser. And you can see the character of the wood and it's coming right back, right out from under that nasty gunk that's on there. And here's that area that I said that was repaired underneath the magazine cutoff. And you can see the splice line on the inside. It was well done right up there by the very edge of it. Uh, that looks like that could use just a little bit of uh, some sort of epoxy or something to saturate there and make sure that that stays nice and solid. And then I think that the stock may also have been repaired back here by the butt plate can see that square line there I think a piece of wood has been spliced in there I'll be able to tell more about that when I take the butt plate off of it so we'll find out about that later and then the other nice thing is as I've been washing this gunk off I can see just a faint hint of the cartouche right here and I don't know if it'll show on the camera but I can just start to make out the numbers but I cannot read it so I believe that it's either just worn off or maybe in the course of the repair that was made right there, it's possible that it uh, was smoothed out. My neighbor's taken off in his truck. I'm surprised he didn't say anything. So that's where we're at on the crag right now. I'm very carefully cleaning this stock. Uh, I really like the character of the wood. Now that it's getting that gunk off there, you can see some of the grain lines there. I think it's going to be really nice looking when I get it all taken care of. So. Once again, crag stocks are really thin right here. So again, here's the before and after. Here's the before. You can see that nasty brushed on whatever gunk it is. And then as you roll it over here, you see where I have been degreasing it. There's the, the P mark and the D. And then to the side that's uh, cleaned up and looking a lot better. So I'll keep plugging along on this crag, carefully clean it up. I'll show you the progress as I go along the best I can. Tomorrow I might get the steel out here and uh, get it boiled up, but yeah, it, it's definitely way better once I get that. You can see right there, you can actually see it's really thick and kind of pasty looking on there. That's the way the other side looked and it, it wiped right off with not all that much effort. So, and then what I'll do is after I get it all cleaned up, I'll give it a few good days to make sure it's nice and dry, make sure the moisture content is right that all the stuff is evaporated off and then I'll uh, I'll rub a little bit of tongue oil into it just to just to keep it going so I think it's gonna be fine I say I do think that it's it's definitely had a repair there and I'm thinking that it had a repair right there too but uh, and then you can see the steel you can see the varnishy stuff on kind of half of that it started to wipe off the other side and then there's some sort of tar like substance right there the uh, the degreaser that I'm using isn't quite uh, the right thing to dissolve that, so I might have to I might have to get that black gunk off of there with some lacquer thinner or something before I uh, steam that butt plate. But uh, I think it's going to come together just fine. I like the way the wood is looking beneath, and, and a little bit more of that grain character right up in this area too. You can see that walnut grain character there. So. Okay, well I'm back inside at the bench and we'll get another look at the crag stock now that I've got about as much of the goo off of it as I'm willing to go after. You can look back on the butt stock there and see the grain coming out of it. I did investigate this uh, square looking mark on the back and I do have a little bit of the same marking on the other side. You can see it if you get the light just right there, you can see that. It appears to be where at some point it was fixtured or clamped in some way and it compressed some of the wood. So I'm just going to let that be. Um, there is no cracking back there. That is not a repair or a patch. It's uh, just been squeezed down with some sort of a clamp at some point, maybe a fixture, I, I don't know. Um, I'll keep an eye out on other 
1898 Craig stocks and see if I can see it anywhere else. I'm trying to get the light just right where you can see that there is that same line on that. There it is right there. On this side, there is that same line, just not as prominent as on this side. But the stock has uh, that nasty brushed on goo that was on it did come off with just a little bit of rubbing. Not a lot of uh, problem getting that taken care of. So we'll go ahead and start getting some sealant back on this, some tongue oil to keep it preserved. They think the color is going to be really nice. Just a little bit of sealer on there to take care of it. I didn't do any sanding or anything of that nature. Just uh, wiped it off with some gentle solvents to get that waxy gunk off of there. And get a look at this handguard. This, this thing, this has got some color in it that's just dynamite. It's amazing the wood that was available back then for something even like a military rifle. It's, that's just going to be really nice when it's all set up. I think when this thing is out in the sun, it's really going to look like something. They say, like I showed outdoors, there's some grain patterning on this side of the stock that's pretty nice. You can see it's kind of got that top. Uh, you know, you can see the lines in the maple, or excuse me, in the walnut right there. Um, I guess everyone has a good side and a better side. I guess I would call this the better side, and this side would be the good side. There's not as much character, but you can see some grain patterning there. And I didn't clean it so much that all of the black came off. There's still a fair amount of uh, a black present from use over the years and age. You know, and the red color from just oxidation over time, they just get that way, so. But I can see a little bit of that patterning up here in the front. I think when we get some tongue oil on there, this is gonna look pretty nice. So that'll be the next step. I'll uh, start to hand rub a little bit of that tongue oil finish into it to get it sealed up. I'll probably do a little bit more just gentle cleaning in the barrel channel where it has had some preservative grease, which is what it should have on the steel there. And uh, I think it's gonna look pretty good. And then to look at the steel of the rifle a little bit, I still haven't knocked out that front blade yet and finished cleaning this up so you can still see that varnishy stuff on there. But uh, and you know, on this ring still too, you can see that that kind of gold color, that'll wipe right off with solvent. It's It's been coming right off. The barrel, um, I just did a real quick wipe on it and it's coming up real nicely. And then back here on the receiver ring, it was all it's all just griming stuff. I mean, as far there there is no rust or pitting on this action at all. It's a very, very clean example. So we'll just get the goo cleaned off of it. I will put it in my steam tube and uh, after that, lightly card it. And uh, I think a kerosene wipe will blacken it up pretty well. You can see that, you know, the top of the barrel where they're exposed, it's where it's gotten the most beat up, you know, rack damage or whatever over time that's just what happens but uh, like a lot of these military rifles you look where things were protected and boy the finish is just spectacular you it would have just been a dynamite looking rifle when it was brand new so we'll stay at it get it cleaned up get it steamed up cart it out and I think it's going to be a keeper so there's the rest of the parts that still need some cleaning and whatnot we'll uh, get it taken care of and put back together and hopefully out to the range soon Okay, so here's the Craig stock after two applications of tongue oil finish. Uh, it's starting to come up a little bit. It's uh, nice and sealed. I may do one more coat, rub it real good to make sure everything's blended out real good. Uh, we didn't hurt the finish on this piece of wood at all by taking that goo off of it. So this tongue oil is mostly just on the surface uh, over the top of what was already there. You can see the wood does have some character. This isn't the best light. I wanted to go outside to show how this was coming up. Uh, it's a little misty outside right now, but uh, you can see a little bit of those uh, wavy grain lines right there on the wrist. There's some, I don't think you can see it on the camera, but just below that little wavy area there, if you get it in just the right light, you can start to see some of the script of the cartouche that's there, but it's not very evident. And then you can see some of the grain patterning there in the back. So like I said, this is two rubbed in coats of tongue oil finish, the first being full strength, the second being thinned about 50%. Um, you know, it's only, a, there's only maybe, oh, I don't know what, uh, five or six finger dabs of, of the finish on it rubbed in. So, I mean, it doesn't take a lot because this stock is already 
well sealed from the original finish so you can spread that tongue oil finish out a long ways. Uh, I, I like to rub it rather aggressively. I start out with a finger, one fingertip and do circular motions, a little bit of back and forth. And then uh, after it's well spread out, I, I rub it quite vigorously with the palm of my hand and uh, let it warm up and then I just let it set. And uh, my goal is, is to get it uh, spread out with an equal layer all throughout the surface of the thing. And then I give it plenty of time to cure. And uh, if it gets too glossy, then I'll go back and just touch it with some real light steel wool. Um, I have done wax afterwards, but this still has a little bit of that weird look to it because it's not fully polymerized yet. So it, you know, even though it's dry to the touch, you can tell that it isn't, you know, fully done. It will flatten out some, especially being thin 50% on that final application there. And, and I'll take a look at it, how it looks. I may end up rubbing one more coat into it, but we've kept the red color. We've kept the texture. It's all looking real good. So probably we'll set the stock to the side for now and then uh, begin working more on the steel parts.